Hey guys, going on? Megan here. Good to be back as usual. So let's take a quick look at this study. So you have three groups of guys that were separated between the lower body group, meaning they only train low body, the upper body group, and the full body group, right? Three times a week for eight weeks. And the goal of the study was to see which method of training would drop my stand the most. So once again, the lower body group only trained legs, the upper body group only upper body three times a week, of course. And the full body group train everything. And as you can see, unsurprisingly, the full body group had the biggest, by far the biggest drop in myostatin. The lower body group dropped myostatin to an extent, uh, obviously lower than the upper body group. But as you can see, it's night and day when you compare both results to the upper and lower body group. And obviously, they also had the biggest increase in phyllostatin, which was obviously the number one myostatin blocker. And the results speak for themselves when it comes to changing scale of the muscle mass. The full body group built significantly more muscle. And they also lost significantly more fat, as you can see down here in the lower right corner. But anyway, this is another episode of Myostatin Monday. You guys seem to enjoy these episodes, but we just talk about random things related to myostatin, which is obviously the most important molecule when it comes to muscle mass, whether you're natty or enhanced. It is the most important gene you want to constantly downregulate if your goal is to maximize muscle growth and fat loss as well, because obviously the lower your myostatin levels, the leaner you'll be. Now, for those who need a refresh on myostatin, by the way, you can skip this part of the video if you're already familiar with this. But for those who need a refresher, it's just a protein that your body produces, obviously from a gene. And it has four main functions in the body. The first one is obviously stops protein synthesis. It increases protein breakdown. It lowers satellite cell activation. And it makes you insulin resistant as fuck. Which obviously makes you skinny fat and makes it harder for you to lose fat. And phyllostatin is obviously the other protein that your body makes that neutralizes the effects of myostatin. So the more myostatin you have, the worse you're going to look. The less myostatin you have, obviously from lowering it on a daily basis the easier it is going to be for you to put on muscle and to lose fat. Same goes for phyllostatin, vice versa. The more phyllostatin you have, the easier it is to build muscle, easier it is to burn fat, the less phyllostatin you produce. And again, obviously, all these things can be manipulated through diet and exercise. And here are some visual examples of what I mentioned earlier. As you can see here, the reason why astronauts lose muscle when they go in space is because my statin goes through the roof. Same thing with HIV or cancer patients. The reason why their muscles wither away is because when you have HIV and certain forms of cancer, your myostatin levels go through the roof. Your body starts to really increase the activity of this gene. Same thing for uh, when you put your leg in a cast or when you're in a wheelchair for a long time or you're not very active. The reason why you experience uh, such a significant loss in muscle mass is because inactivity increases myostatin. And as you can see in these examples here, these are mice that were genetically modified to overproduce phyllostatin and underproduce uh, in fact, completely lack myostatin. And as you can see, look at the difference between the mouse at the top, which is a regular mouse, and the mouse at the bottom, which was engineered to have the double fucking combo. High phyllostatin, low myostatin, night and day. There goes the lag comparison. Here's another comparison side by side. Here's the famous monkey that was injected with phyllostatin. This is his leg. And look at what happened after just a few weeks of injecting phyllostatin into his quads. And last but not least, here's the boy I made a video about a while back. He was lucky enough to have a myostatin deficiency. He's only about 10 years old. And look at him compared to an average kid his age. Insane development, look at his traps, look at his abs, look at his calf muscles, his rhomboids. And if you look at the world of professional bodybuilders, that's really all steroids do. The reason why they look so cartoonish is mainly because steroids neutralize the effects of myostatin, mainly by increasing phyllostatin, increasing IGF-1 production, increasing androgen receptor activity, on and so forth. So at the end of the day, it all boils down to the myostatin phyllostatin pathway. These several studies have confirmed this. For example, the most important gene when it comes to activating protein transcription, you cannot build muscle without this transcription factor. And sure enough, myostatin cock blocks accurate one so before protein synthesis even begins you need to downregulate this gene as you can see here, the correlation is insane highest one on record another study here shows the same thing people that reduce myostatin the most after each workout session are the ones that put on the most muscle are the ones who tend to put on the most muscle and this study here explains the reason why old women why it's very very hard to put on muscle if you're an old woman mainly because as you can see when an old person trains they're able to lower myostatin significantly. When a young person trains, obviously they have the biggest reduction in myostatin, which is why young people put on muscle so fast. And even young women 
also lower my statin to a significant extent. But when it comes to old women, it is very hard for them to lower my statin from training. So no matter how hard they train, some of them are going to have a hard time putting on muscle. Once again, showing you how important my statin is, even if you're a natural person. And that's also the reason why females in general can never be as big as men. It's not just testosterone. Obviously, testosterone plays a role, but even testosterone's role involves the phylostatin pathway. Women just don't have favorable myostatin genotypes. Very, very hard for them to manipulate it after training. And another very underrated thing about myostatin is people forget it is more predictive of insulin sensitivity. So just by looking at somebody's myostatin levels, you can pretty much tell if they're insulin resistant or not, right? So a lot of you skinny fat guys out there, a lot of the dad bods, a lot of obese individuals who have very, very, very high insulin resistance, nine out of 10 times is because they're not down-regulating the myostatin gene enough. They're either inactive or they don't train too frequently. And that is why almost all the powerful my statin inhibitors are banned by the world anti-doping agency now back to the study so as you can see here biggest drop in my statin came from the full body group that obviously makes sense they're using the most muscles and i've been telling you guys for years year after year after year full body workouts are no joke especially if you're natural and especially if you have average or suboptimal genetics right you're still going to get a my statin reduction if you only train your upper body or only train your lower body but you're going to get the best bang for your buck if you want to maximize muscle growth and you want to maximize fat loss. You're going to get the best bang for your buck if you do full body workouts. Or obviously if you do things that are similar, you know, push, pull, upper, lower. Long story short, you want to train your entire body. You can split it up if you want. You're not going to get the exact same results, but you'll always be better off than the people who are only training legs or only training the upper bodies. And the same goes for phylostatin, right? You want to maximize phylostatin production. Do full body workouts, train your entire body, and sure enough, the results translated into muscle mass. And which is fat. And what's fascinating about this is the fact that most of these studies, everyone is eating the same amount of protein, same amount of calories, which I, which actually does a disservice to full body workouts because you have to increase your protein intake and your caloric intake when you're doing full body workouts, especially protein. Studies have shown if you're doing full body workouts, you cannot eat the same amount of protein as a person who's just doing splits. It's common fucking sense and once again i've been telling you guys that for years you cannot train chest back legs arms delts all in one session and eat the same amount of protein as the person who just went in their chest and triceps right your body needs more nitrogen so most studies that actually compare full body to any other type of training are actually not even done correctly because they're not factoring the fact that you need more protein on full body workouts which makes it even more impressive that a lot of these studies are showing that full body workouts are still p producing equal or even better gains, even though the people are actually recovering and eating suboptimally. And once again, here goes the fat loss chart, right? More muscle, less fat. Best of both worlds. What else can you ask for? And keep in mind, guys, it's not that I'm biased towards full body workouts. I actually enjoy splits a lot better. They're more fun. And I dread my full body workout sessions because they are long and they are painful as fuck. But they get the job done if you're trying to put on muscle fast. And like I said, if you have average genetics. If it was up to me, <clears throat> I would do splits every single day for the rest of my life because they're a lot more fun, a lot more enjoyable. It's just it will take you forever to put on muscle and strength on uh, split training programs. Unless, of course, like I said, you enhance or you have good genetics. But anyway, I hope this video helps. I hope that answers the question as far as how to maximize the phylostatin and myostatin ratio while training. Stay tuned for more videos on the subject. If you want to see my other videos on the other ways to lower myostatin or increase phylostatin, check out the playlist. All right, guys, I'm out of here. All right, guys, don't forget to like or share the video, subscribe and hit the bell, and buy my HSP Nucleus of a Low Training Program. It's the ultimate program for maximum muscle growth. It includes full body workout splits, bro splits, push pull, home workouts, you name it. Also comes with a complete guide for macros, nutrition, fat loss, muscle growth, hormones, including a meal plan. It's pretty much all my 16 years of experience condensed into one fucking book. You're also going to get free copies of any future edition. So visit team3dalpha.com and you can use the 40% off coupon code Nucleus of Lord. Or you could just buy the shit at full price. Alright guys, I'm out of here.